Good evening, everyone. This is Brother Smith from First Gospel Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I greet you all in the name of the Father and his, the Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, I hope you've had a good day. I, I know my face may be a little bit red. I've been out in the sun today. We've had a little project going and pouring some concrete and and so I got a little bit of sun on me today. But anyway, I'm thankful that I'm healthy and that I'm doing good today. And I, I want all the saints in the church in Little Rock, uh, First Gospel Church, to know that I miss you. <laughs> I miss you very much. I miss having services with you. And, and uh, <clears throat> so I'm, um, I'm longing I, I, I said the other day, I wonder what it's going to be like when we have that first service and we get back together. Uh, it's, uh, it, um, it's a time where I'm sure we're all looking forward to anyway. I, I love all of you and I miss you. I've talked to some of you uh, on the phone and um, hopefully we'll be back together soon in our, our services in the church. But for right now, I'm thankful that we're doing as well as we are. Uh, I know that Arkansas, uh, with this coronavirus, I think we've had uh, about 1,100, a little over 1,100 cases in total, and there's been 21 deaths in our state. And, um, um, you know, that's um, around 2% of everyone that's got it. We've been very, very fortunate. Um, you know, there's many other states that have been a hit much harder than we have in Arkansas. So we certainly are thankful here, but we're certainly praying for our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ across our nation. And um, uh, I just want you to know that uh, there's other, our other countries or missionary works like in the Dominican Republic they're shut down uh, over there. Many of them are out of work. Many of them are hungry. I had churches, our churches in the body over there. We've had saints hungry with no food where we are helping as much as possible. I sent them a, an offering uh, just this past week for uh, beans and rice. You know, I told them they just got to make it stretch. And, uh, but I did receive a call today and, uh, you know, uh, those that care, uh, and are concerned and, and are hearing these things that, uh, so I received a call today from, uh, one of the brethren that wants to send us money to help with those that are at, without food over there in the Dominican Republic. Uh, Sister Gina Shaw sent a email out to all the pastors in the body uh, concerning all the missionary works and the trouble that they're in in, in uh, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti and Mexico and Honduras and Philippines and India and uh, um, Africa, um, Guatemala, all of these countries, you know, they, they're all being hit and those people are without work. We have a uh, a family in in the on the island of Saint Martin, that's they they're locked in. They can't leave the island. No one else can go in the island, and they're they're wanting to leave the island as soon as they can. But they have to be free to get out of there. And so, that's Brother Josecito Calderon and his wife Denise. If you would remember hey. them in your prayer, we would appreciate it. Um, so. Let me turn my phone down here and and I uh, had somebody from the church just wanting to know what time we were going to be on the air. So I just texted him back, said now. Anyway, uh, God bless you all. Let me, I, I'm going to read a little bit in the 34 Psalms, uh, Psalms 34, just to start off with. It's not really my talk today, but um, I just thought it's a good song psalm and uh i thought i'd share it with you 
Psalms 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. One of the things is God's in control, saints. There, don't, don't be blaming this on the devil. And uh, I, I know that evil is at work. I don't have any problem with understanding that. But I also know there's nothing going to get past God. God is in control. Um, he's going to win. Uh, there's nothing can defeat the Lord. And we're on the Lord's side. And so we can exalt his name. We can be thankful. Verse four says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from my fears. They looked upon him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. Talking about the people of God. But this poor man cried and the Lord heard me <laughs> and saved him, heard him and saved him out of all of his trouble. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Right now is the time we need to exercise our trust in the Lord. And we need to worship him. We need to praise him. We need to recognize that he's in control. He knows exactly what's going on in our world. I may say a little more about that here in a little while, but I have full confidence in God knows what's going on. And I've mentioned before, you know, I mentioned here recently how the children of Israel uh, were down in Goshen when the famine was up on the land of Egypt and Joseph was in charge and, and God protected those people down in Goshen and of that seven years of famine. And God knows where you're at. And God, uh, we may suffer some. We may go through some suffering, some trials, but the Lord will see us through it. God will be with us if we'll just have faith and trust in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. You, you, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Talking about, you know, just a natural aspect there that the young lions don't have wisdom to know how to uh, gain, you know, to, to win their prey so that they uh, would have plenty to eat. They suffer hunger because they lack wisdom. And he's likening that unto us and saying, but those that seek the Lord, in other words, it's not wisdom not to seek God, not to trust in the Lord, especially during times like this, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, you children, hearken unto me, and I'll teach ye the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Guile is deceit. It's being, you know, it's being deceitful. I've often said that uh, one of the greatest places you can grow to in God is when you're not deceiving others and you're not deceiving yourself. You don't, you know, when you reach a place that you begin to get rid of guile out of your life, where there's not deceit, um, you know, that you're not, some, you're not acting to be or pretending to be someone you're not. You're not also pretending to be lower than you're not. But you have served God uh, in a way that you've grown to a place that you know where you're at in God. You know you're not on a false foundation. You're on a sure foundation that uh, the Lord has helped you develop in your life. If you're, if you're on a false foundation, you're gonna have to come down. If you're on a sure foundation, you're not going down. You're not gonna fall down. And no matter what you go through, that's who you are, that's where you're at. 
I mentioned the other day, you all are, uh, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're going to overcome by the word of your testimony, like the Bible says, that the early church overcomers did. They overcame by the word of their testimony. Your testimony is your experience. It's your life, what you're going through and how God's directing your life. And so, uh, anyway, uh, you, you, no one has your testimony and you're gonna have to live your testimony and you're God's workmanship. He's working in your life and you're gonna have to develop and overcome by the word of your testimony or the experiences and things that God's taking you through. Um, keep, he said, keep thy tongue from evil and from speaking guile. Depart, verse 14, from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Now notice what that says. It says, seek peace. It's not gonna come automatic and pursue it. You're gonna to have to look for it. You're gonna to have to work at it. Uh, you know, if you've got people you're not at peace with, you'll have to work at making peace with them. You know, a lot of times people do us wrong. We feel like, well, they owe me. I don't owe them. Well, but, but the stronger, you see, the more mature and the stronger is willing to... Uh, you might say, take it on the chin and be more humble and, and seek peace with those that has ought against you, even if the ought's not right. Uh, you know, we have to have that tenderness in us that, that we're, we're always looking for, for a way to be peacemakers. That's what Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, they, they'll be called the children of, of, of God. Um, then he says, um, uh, the, the eyes, verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. We have to endeavor to maintain righteousness in our lives if we want God to hear our prayers and hear us when we cry out to him and are in need of his help. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. That's talking about ultimately. God, God wants to save those that uh, are evil, but those that, you know, uh, in other words, uh, ultimately, God's going to judge all evil, and it will be cut off from the earth. So we certainly don't want uh, to be included in that group. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Doesn't mean you won't go through problems. You won't go through situations. Uh, hi, Sister Pippin. We're glad you're with us. Uh, the uh, It don't mean we're not going to go through things. But God will deliver us. Sometimes we'll have to go through. Uh, God, he will take us through, the song says, he'll take us through the fire. <laughs> uh, with no telling what, God may take us through that will purge our lives. It will, it will uh, uh, develop us in a greater way. But God will deliver us in the end, he'll deliver us from our troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that have a broken heart. We, you know, let's keep, let's try to keep a brokenness uh, towards God. That, that uh, and it said, and save us such as are of a contrite spirit. That word contrite means to be, it means crushed. A broken heart and a crushed spirit. In other words, I, I keep my, the, the spirit of the Adamic nature. I keep that crushed. I keep it uh, broken, I keep it down. I keep br myself broken because of it. It's working in my body and God's nigh to those that are humble enough to do that. He resists the proud, but he's nigh to the humble. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous. See, he doesn't deliver you from all of them. You're go, they're gonna be afflictions, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Sometimes I have to, and I hate to even say this, but sometimes it may take a resurrection to get your deliverance. You may go through afflictions that you may lose your life through some of it. You know, there's no sense in playing games or talking like nothing ever happens to the righteous. They do, it does. And, uh, but, but remember this, precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. God remembers his saints. And by the way, that word saint, it means holy. In Spanish, there is no, that word for holy is santo, which is saint. That's the only word they have. They don't have two words, holy and saint. But also it's synonymous with faithful, upright, just, wise, uh, so, and, and that's, that's talking about the saints of God, the just, and when we get into dealing with the resurrection of the just, you're talking about the resurrection of saints. You're talking about the resurrection of the upright, the resurrection of the faithful, the resurrection of the, the wise. Uh, you know, when you start talking about the unjust, you're talking about those that are not upright, they're not faithful, they're not wise, they're, they're, they're ignorant, they're wicked, they're, uh, you know, uh, they're proud. Uh, those people are not just. And so uh, we're talking about two total different types of characteristics of people that come up in two different resurrections. And so Anyway, let me, I'll finish these next three verses. It said, he keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Of course, we know that he was talking about Christ. Evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So I just wanted to read that to you to encourage you. I want you to be encouraged right now during this time. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of, you know, that we've never went through anything like this in our whole life, uh, in our whole generation, or even the last two generations. Or uh, we haven't, you know, it's it. I mean, we have generations before during World War One, World War Two. Then also dealing with uh, the different uh, plague, yellow fever, uh, tuberculosis, um, many of the things that, that have taken place, polio, uh, smallpox. If you go to some of the graveyards, you, you, I used to go visit graveyards and just look and I'd see whole families You'd see families that died, children, four or five children out of a family, mother and a father, grandparents, and all during you know a time that when there was a a a, a pandemic or a, a plague on the earth, we've been a fortunate people. Uh, God's blessings has been on this nation, and uh, that's why I think it would be very very wise for Americans today to cry out to God, repent to him for our nation, our forefathers that have failed, anyone that has any uh, knowledge of God's working in America knows that this nation has turned away from God and is not near the, the righteous uh, uh, place that they once were. And uh, this nation, uh, if this nation doesn't do some changing, there's no doubt in my mind that God's judgment will come upon the nation of America before it's over with. Uh, but God has chosen America uh, to restore his church and God's blessed America more than any other nation in the world. And uh, his gospel, this is the place God chose to restore his gospel. At the same time that his gospel is gonna be restored by a remnant in, in his restored church in the end of this Gentile world, the, the majority uh, is, is gonna turn away from God. 
And uh, I, I might mention something about that here this evening because uh, many people, it's on their minds is what is going on when, you know, uh, people are wondering, is this, are we near the end of the world? Well, no, we are not uh, in the final uh, prophetical hour of the Gentile world. Uh, I think we have uh, some years left and I'm not one that tries to project time. Uh, I think it's dangerous uh, when you start projecting time and then if you're wrong and it doesn't come to pass. However, uh, I do know that, I mean, we would be foolish not to know that we are getting near the end of the Gentile world. Uh, I, I have a timetable and scripturally that I could go through that would show that the uh, last prophetical hour would start around 2033. And there would be 15 years of, of God's final judgment during that time. But I'm not one that tries to put out a year and a time like that. It's just the best I can come up in my position on prophecy right now. But, uh, but I know that I can't be too far. Uh, you know, I know God works in 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 two thousand year world worlds. The two thousand years from Adam to to Moses, from Christ, from Abraham to Christ, and now we're and and Christ uh, died in A.D. thirty thirty three thirty three and a half somewhere right in there, and so we're we're in two thousand and twenty. So we're not you know. At the best, we may be 13 years away. At least it's reasonable to consider that. Uh, when you look at Bible prophecy, I could get more emphatic on it, but I still, you know, I'm, I'm still asking God to help us to understand more clearly. The Bible does say that the Lord does nothing, but first he reveals it to his prophets. You'll notice in the early church, those, those apostles in the early church had a, clear understanding of the coming of the Lord. I'm not talking about the coming of the Lord down there to catch anyone away. I'm talking about him coming in judgment. He came in judgment on the day of Pentecost and continued judgment, Peter said, must first begin in the house of the Lord. And so uh, uh, that church back there they came under judgment after Jesus came back after on the day of Pentecost. Judgment began in a divine order of God. If you remember what happened to Ananias and Sapphira, and uh, the eternal judgment was the judgment seat of Christ was set up, and there was eternal judgment. Uh, and that eternal judgment worked all the way until finally in AD 70, God cut Israel off and judged Israel. And I would go as far as to say that that judgment lasted for another seven and a half years uh, up until about AD 78. But, uh, and then when you begin to look at the end of the, the, the Gentile world, there are several things that has to take place in the end of the Gentile world before the end comes. Uh, we're going to have to see that the, uh, that first the church is gonna to have to be restored. We're, we have a measure of judgment. There's a certainly, uh, judgment is certainly working amongst us, uh, but, we're gonna to have to have a fully restored church. And I see an apostolic order in the church is, is necessary. And uh, finally, the judgment seat of Christ is set up and God's judgment will work down here just like it did in the early church. Uh, there'll have to be a restored church first. Uh, I know there are those that thinks that the restored church, the purpose of it is to judge the world but, but the world is gonna be judged by ministry, just like the early church. The early church judged that world. When people rejected the work of God through that early church, 
that was blasphemy that there was no forgiveness for when people blasphemed God, the Spirit of God, when they blasphemed the work of God through the, through the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. There was, and God manifesting himself fully in a full manifestation. Now, I don't see the church having that full manifestation right now, but I do think that we're getting closer. I think God's getting us closer to that. And as these things transpire in the world, I think this coronavirus, I would have to say that it is God getting the world ready for judgment. There's gonna to have to be some things changed. See, we, we never knew that things could happen just overnight like this. We never uh, conceived it. But overnight, our world has changed. And uh, the, 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 you watch, the world governments are gonna change. And um, we're, we'll see some things happen. One of the things that's gonna have to happen is um, there's gonna have to be this, the two-horned beast, it's mentioned in Revelations, the 13th chapter, that is going to uh, make the image to the beast. And then, and, and until that's done, you read nowhere in the book of Revelation where there is a mark, uh, those that worshiped the beast and the image of the beast. And so there, uh, those, are, those are some things that's gonna have to transpire first uh, because there, there's going to have to be a building of the, of the image of the beast. And uh, then there's going to have to be uh, the beast, which is the eighth head. It, that will have to uh, come into power. And then that even has to be destroyed. And then the 10 kings, the, the 10 king, the kings of the east. The 10 kings will take control for a period of time. And then finally, the seven vials will be poured out, which will be the seven, seven is a number of complete uh, judgment. The, set, the complete judgment of God's gonna come on this world. It'll, it's gonna end in Armageddon. And then, of course, the millennial, the thousand year millennial reign will take place and it'll take God. It, that sounds like a long time, a thousand years, but look how long it's been. It took God, uh, it took God after 2,000 years of the fall of Adam to finally prepare a people, starting with the covenant that he made with, with Abraham and developing Israel out of those people. And then it took God 2,000 years to get those people ready to receive Christ. Finally, Christ came to this world and brought a full manifestation of God, not only through himself, but through that, uh, those 12 apostles and then the apostle Paul to the Gentiles. Uh, God brought a, a full manifestation that uh, caused people to be able to mature First, be born again of the Spirit of God to receive God's nature and develop that nature and overcome the nature of Adam, the Adamic nature, and receive the nature of God through the rebirth and then be perfected or matured in that new man, that nature of God through the rebirth and finally overcome the Adamic nature. It took God 4,000 years to bring that about. And then his working among the Gentiles now, it's taken God 2,000 years almost to bring us to where we are. And we're, we are not yet where the early church was, where God developed that church and brought those people and made up a portion of his bride, which he's got to make up the remainder of his bride down here in the end of the Gentile world. And then it'll take a 1,000 years now, the church fell away out of the early church. Uh, the, I'm talking about the uh, New Testament church, the end of the Jewish world. Uh, 
God made up a portion of his bride there. And then God began to deal with the Gentiles. He brought the Gentiles in and now God's dealing with the Gentile world to make up the remainder of his bride. Uh, many people have a misconception. I did have, I, was, I came up in Pentecostal uh, organization and, and I, you know, of course I grew up believing what I was taught, but finally God calls, you know, began to touch my mind and caused me to ask questions about not having answers to, to questions that we had and uh, God began to deal with me. And God began to help me to find this body of people that had more answers than, than I had. And uh, I'd never heard of God restoring the church. And, you know, I thought we had everything that we needed. But when I began to hear, hear it made complete sense to me that we were far from having a church like the early church and that we did need restoration. So when I heard that message, that, that, that pricked my heart and I began to open my heart and receive new things. And, and I'm so thankful today. I'm thankful for that. And um, so, but I do realize that the early church, the, 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 in the end of the Jewish world, when God finished harvesting that world and making up a portion of his bride, he began to work with Gentiles and you have to remember the Jewish people of God, the Israelites. God worked with them for 2,000 years to bring them to that. When God began to work with us Gentiles, we did not have that backdrop or that platform. There's no way we could, we could understand what the Jews were understanding. We didn't have the understanding of the law of Moses or the prophets or all of the history of what God had done with that nation of people. Uh, we were worshipers, our forefathers were worshipers of idols, false gods. We had very little knowledge of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so it's taken a long time for God's people in among the Gentiles to begin to get our understanding of God's spiritual things. I said last week, we're to be uh, led by the Spirit. Now, that's not something that's, you know, mystical. Woo, you know, uh, that's not what that's talking about. You're going to have to have an understanding of God's Word. Uh, when you've got an understanding of God's Word, your mind becomes spiritual. And, and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, can deal with you and lead you. But when you've got the Word of God that helps you to stay in line with spiritual knowledge, that's what leads you. Being led of the Spirit of God by knowledge of his word and, and understanding of God's ways. And that takes time. That takes time to get there. It's taken the Gentiles a long time to get where we're at. And many people are still confused. That's why the, the book of Revelation talks about Babylon. It means confusion. Many of God's people are in Babylon, in confusion today. All of these different uh, secular groups and organizations have divided God's people and they all preach something different. That's nothing. That's nothing like the New Testament church that we read about. They all saw eye to eye. They believed. They were taught the same thing by the same 12 apostles and the apostle Paul. And so they, those people uh, were hearing one message. The Bible says there is one body and one spirit. See, there's just one spirit of the body. It's the spirit of Christ. It's not a religious spirit. It's not a spirit of man's ideology or thoughts about what they think about God or however they want to make the Bible say whatever they think it ought to say. But when you really have God as the head of the church, his spirit will be with his people. And the closer we get to him, the more of his spirit we will see and the more we'll develop. Hi, Sister Zachary, I'm glad you're here. 
Um, anyway, uh, so uh, we're 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 having to develop in this restoring of the church. And then once the church is restored and God begins to to bring judgment through an apostolic order in the end of this world in his body, while all of that is happening, the world is going to be framing and forming in a complete different way. You can watch what I'm going to tell you that religion, and I'm talking about Christianity, it will come together in the end of this world. All of these organizations, I'll use uh, Isaiah, the fourth chapter, where it says seven women will take a hold of one man, seven being the, the number of fullness, uh, one man being the leader of, of world religion. And, uh, and, but they'll say, let us eat our own bread. Uh, in other words, have our own doctrine. Let us wear our own apparel. Let us keep our organizational covering. But let us be called by thy name to take away the reproach. What reproach is it? That we divided and separated and we, we've been a separated people. And so in the end of this world, that'll all begin to come back together under the auspice of, uh, of this is the healing of the body. We're all coming together, but they're all going to eat their own bread. They're not all going to believe the same thing. They're going to have organizational coverings uh, that they're not going to get rid of. And so all of that's going to transpire and it's going to deceive many. Remember the, the mark of the beast is 666. And that is that it is the body of it the whole body of the people. The word, the number six is that of man. And so the, the body of it is gonna be of man's spirit. The soul of it, that's the mind of it. You know, you can take the mark of the beast in your forehead, that's your mind. You're gonna take that in your forehead and you're, and I'm talking about the people who do take the mark and the mark of his image. See, there's people that's already taken the mark of the beast, but the image of the beast is going to be set up and there's people going to take the mark of the image of the beast. And so uh, uh, the body, the soul, and then the spirit of it, there it, all three categories of it, 666 six, six is man's, it's man-made. It's, man, it's, it's put together in a body by man the mindset of it, the doctrinal beliefs of it is going to be dominated by man's ideology and the spirit of it will be the spirit of man and man's religion. It's not going to be the spirit of Christ. Like there is one body, the early church, now in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, there's one body and one spirit. And then there's one Lord and there's only one faith. There's one Lord and, and having a knowledge of him and a knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ is the one faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and it has to be the word of God, not man's ideas. And we have to rely on God for that. We have to rely on God to help us. And... Uh, but but here's where we are. And, and God will have a ministry in a restored church in the end of this world that will bear witness. Remember Jesus said, I am not alone. There is another that bears witness of me, speaking of his father. And then uh, remember what he told his disciples his 12 apostles. He said, speaking of the Holy Ghost in the 14th chapter of St. John, he said, he told them, he said, the, the comforter, he said, he has been with you, but he shall be in you. 
See, the Spirit of God was with them in the old covenant, but no one had been born of it and no one was of God, his birth and, and had his nature within them until they received this comforter, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When they received that, they were God's child by birth and were born of God's nature. He told them in that day, you will know that I am in him, the father, and he is in me, Jesus Christ, and we are in you. He, was, he dwelt in them, he worked in them, and, they, and they, he and his father were a witness in works, Paul said. I'm, he said, I did not come to you in man's wisdom, but I came in the demonstration of the spirit. See, the spirit of God worked it was not only an anointing there, but there was workings and miracles and manifestations of God that took place. And I, I think that we are to, we're to look for that in the early church. Those things will take place in the early church and there will be a, a ministry that has a testimony that bears witness of the Father and the Son with them. Not that we don't have any testimony today, but I'm talking about like the early church, like you read about in the New Testament. See, I'm not willing, I am not willing to settle on this side of Jordan. You know, you, you can get in a place in God where you're comfortable. I'm not willing for that. I know that we are lacking what the early church had, and I'm not willing to accept less than what they had as a restored church. I, I am not willing to say that our church is restored and we have everything that we need. No, we don't. No, we don't. We need what the early church had. We do not have the power that the early church had, nor the witnessing or the manifestation in the same measure. And it's not time yet, but we're getting closer to that. And God's people, God loves his people. And in God's time, he's bringing us. I believe we're on time. I think God knows what he's doing. And we're where we have to learn. We have to be content with where we are in God, but we have to be desirous enough to know God's plan and what is in the future. And so I'm trying to show you things that's going to happen that helps us to know that we're not yet in the end of this. Now, look in the, in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations, and I don't have time to go through all of this right now, but I'll go through some of it, and some of you that have been around this teaching for a while, it will ring a bell, and you'll know where I'm coming from, but those of you who haven't, you know, uh, look, I put my, our, our, our website, uh, I'll give you my, my email address, it's ifrsmith at aol.com. Feel free to email me. Uh, my, uh, feel, feel free, send me email, send me questions. I'll, I'll get, I will get back to you. Um, I'll try to help you as much as I possibly can. But let me, let me go to the 11th verse in chapter 13 of Revelations. Uh, and yeah, the 11th verse, it says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Now I will say this about it coming up out of the earth. Let me, let me read the rest first. And he had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. Well, if, if you'll notice over in the, in, in the beginning of the 13th chapter, let's just go there in the first verse that I stood upon the sand. This is John I stood up on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and 10 horns, and upon his horns, 10 crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. Now, if you went back to Daniel 7, you would know that the leopard is, depicts Greece. That was the last, that was, that was a dragon power or world power during its time. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. That was 
Medo-Persia that was the world power before Greece. And then it says, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. The lion was Babylon. Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece. And he gave his power and his seat unto great authority. And so uh, this beast that rose up, which was Rome, that was, uh, but it developed out of, from Greece, which developed from Medo-Persia, which developed from Babylon. It had those like parts. And notice in the first verse, he stood on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now go back to the 11th verse. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Different. It's a different beast. It did not form out of these other beasts. It came up out of the earth. Now here in the book of Revelations, the word earth, it, it, it's referring to religion. Uh, if you'll just real quickly with me, look at this. If you'll hold your place here because I'm not through here. But if you look at the seventh, and I'm, I'm, I'm fearful a little bit that I'll lose some of my hearers here, but stay with me just a little bit. I'll try to make this as, as understanding as I can because it's, it would be good for you to understand something about what we're looking at in the future of prophecy that's going to take place yet knowing that we're not complete of what's been prophesied that's going to happen. Now, Revelation 7, um, look what it says. I'm going to read the first three verses. It said, After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, and the wind that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. Now, it's not to blow on the earth, that's religion. The sea, which is the ungodly world, nor any tree, those are righteous people. There's people in religion that aren't really righteous. They're just part of it. But any tree is a live tree or a live saint of God. And I saw another angel sending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice, a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. And that, by the way, the sea is talking about God's people that are in the ungodly world. See, there's a lot of people that have been hurt. They're victims. They're in the world. They've left the church. They've become a part of the religious world or the world. They're part of the sea. But they're God's children. They've been born again. And God will, he will, they're unjust, but God will deal with them and try to get them out of the sea. See, right here, he's telling them, don't you hurt the earth, religion, or the sea. None of my people, even if, they're, even if they're, they may be ungodly sinners. See, an ungodly person, somebody doesn't have any connection with God whatsoever. They're not God's child. But an ungodly sinner, he that sinneth is one that knoweth to do right and doeth it not. So a, a sinner is one of God's children, but they're out in the world living like the ungodly. But God's saying here, don't you hurt religion, any of my people in religion? Don't you hurt the sea, any of my people in, in the sea or any of the trees, not any of my saints? Until, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Now go back with me to the 13th chapter. This beast here. He said, I beheld another beast coming up out of, out of the earth and having two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. That's why I believe that this is talking about the United States. Not all men uh, agree with me on this, but this is my position on it. Uh, I've talked to some men. They do believe that it's civil and, and ecclesiastical power, which is a, a civil power and a religious power. The reason I believe it's the United States of America is because it had two horns like a lamb. See, America had two horns. Horns are powers of a nation. Horns are powers in the Bible and prophecy. And two horns like a lamb. This nation, both civil and religious power, 
the church and state were lamb-like in the beginning. Our forefathers feared God. They built our constitution of this United States in the fear of God. In, uh, in God we trust. They put it right on our money. They prayed. It's in the, in the house of justice in the United States. It's in the presidency. They're, they use the Bible today to make their oaths by. This nation was built on God and the word of God, and it was built out of religious men that fled the Eastern world and fled to the West to get away from the beast system. And they built this nation in the fear of God and as much in God as they could. It was lamb-like, the powers both of church and state, our government and our church. They said, let's make a separation in our constitution of the church and state because we know that we've got to allow God to do his work with his men, the ministry, and we cannot interfere with that. And we have a job as civil servants to the, to the nation to maintain peace as much as possible while the men of God are working, while God's working in our country. This country was lamb-like in its beginning, but it is starting to speak like a dragon. A dragon is a world power government that is joined together with a world power religion. And that does not, it's not taking place right now, but it is going to before it's over with you're gonna see a dragon developed again. And here's what's gonna happen. Verse 13 says, uh, let me read verse 12 first. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. It's talking about Rome. Rome had two elements, the papa, the papa, pagan Rome, the Caesars, and then the papal Rome. The power shifted in Rome and this beast power that was a dragon power, you know, that seven heads and 10 horns, that's talking about seven world powers, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Uh, uh, wait a minute, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Medo Greece, and Rome. Those are six heads. There was, there was a, a, a transfer of headship in, under the Roman power. Uh, but then here is a two-horned beast that's going to speak as a dragon. There's another dragon power. Another dragon power coming. And it's going to speak as a dragon. Started out lamb-like in its horns. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth. See, this beast coming up out of the earth came out of religion, not out of the sea. It did not develop of these others. It didn't. It didn't. It 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 did not <clears throat> evolve out of the beast before it. It came. It was developed out of religion. Our nation was developed out of religion. It was not developed out of these other dragon powers, world powers that came up out of worldly, the worldly powers, but this came up out of religion, America did. He exercised it all the power of the first beast before him and caused it the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. See the last beast, every beast had its head wounded and, and the last beast, Rome doesn't exist as a world power anymore. That was wounded. And now, but it's going to be healed. It, that deadly wound was healed and it did rule for 1260 years, but it, it's been wounded. It's no longer a dragon power, world power over the earth, but there's a two-horned beast that's going to take on a dragon power. I say it's America. I say America is going to rise to that place 
a world power. What other nation has the power to rule this world? America's almost there now. But uh, I think what you need to do is look for, look for America to begin to tax the rest of the world, nations of the world, and bring them under its power. Make them submit to it. And this coronavirus may be, it may either be the beginning or it may be the thing that causes this world to have to look to America stronger than it's ever looked to it before. We'll just have to see what transpires out of all this. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. That's just judgment, sets up judgment in the world and deceiveth them with, that dwell on the earth by means of the miracles or the great things which he had power to do in the sight of the, uh, of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by sword and did live and had power to give life unto the image of the beast and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark of the name of the beast or the number of the name, who is the wisdom, here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is a mighty number of of a man and his number is 600 three score and six so <clears throat> here he's going to cause uh everyone to mark uh how does it say that uh cause them as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed uh, no, I don't think that's talking about literally murder, murdering people. However, it's very possible that men that stand up against this system that's coming, just like every other dragon system that's been stood against, has suffered great, has suffered greatly for it, suffered great persecution, and persecution will come upon the true church in the end of this world. There's no question about it. Uh, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, bond and free, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That's talking about the hand of God. The hand is the ministry. And God's got a ministry that he's called, and there's ministers of many different organizations that will join up with this system. They'll be deceived by it, and they'll join up with the system. Or in their foreheads. If they're not in the ministry, they'll just take the doctrine, the teachings, and they'll receive it. They'll be marked by it. And no man might buy, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of the name. In other words, right now, you can buy and sell. In other words, I'm selling right now. I don't know if you're buying what I'm teaching, but I am selling. I'm a seller of the gospel. I'm a salesman. I'm putting forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, but the day will come where if I don't join the system, I'll be forbidden to buy or sell. I won't be allowed to do what I'm doing unless I become a, a member of the system which I have no intentions of becoming a member of, that no man buy or sell, save he that had the mark. If you got the mark of the beast, you can go right on preaching. Uh, they that have the, the name, uh, the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of the name. Remember the number, 666. It's being in that number. Some people won't really have too much, take too much in their forehead as far as learning is concerned but they'll just become part of the system. They'll just get in the number, you know, rather the spirit of it, or rather it is the doctrine of it, or rather they're just in the body of it. Uh, so 
that's going to take place. Uh, and so <clears throat> uh, that has to, that's going to take place first before 10 kings are actually going to take up. Now, now if you go over to the, uh, I, I won't take time to go into, in fact, I'm probably about to run out of time. Here I am. I've been talking an hour. and uh, But I may continue this on Thursday nights. I don't know. Uh, if you would, I wish you would some give me some comments. Let me know if y'all are really interested in this. Uh, I don't have to talk on it. It is uh, one of the things that I think is important. I think God's gave me a message about this that uh, you know I do I do think it's important for the people of God to have an understanding of where we're at in God's timetable and what is yet to transpire and. Uh, so, you know, in the 14th chapter here, you're talking about uh, the harvest of the end of the Gentile world is going to take place. But also, if you go into uh, the 15th chapter, it deals with uh, the wrath of God and the judgment. 15th to 16th chapter deals with the seven vials of judgment that's going to be poured out in the end of this world. So, uh, I don't know. I may, if if y'all are interested in that, I may I may talk on that sometime next Thursday night at seven o'clock. We'll continue this. And um, anyway, I want to uh, thank all of you for for coming. I saw many of you on tonight, and uh, I appreciate all of you. Again, I'm. Uh, Thank you, Sister Durham. She says it's pertinent for us to know and understand. Uh, I think it is important for us to understand these things and, and uh, really even the sequence of them. See, this has got to transpire. And this is prophecy. It's going to happen. And, uh, and then it's not over. Even, you know, in the last prophetical hour, many things are going to happen while the bride is being made up. Uh, the world is going to be... Uh, going through, God's going to set this world up because God's going to judge it and because they won't hearken to him. And you can be sure the world, for the most part, is not going to hearken to the Lord. And so uh, it's um, uh, God will finally judge this world because they will not hearken to him. And, uh, but he will have a church that will bring a full manifestation. Before God judges this world, he is going to bring a full manifestation to those that have ears to hear and eyes to see that will recognize God and turn their hearts to him. And God will cause many to come out of the world, to come out of religion, come out of Babylon and become a part of his body and let him finish the work and, and become a part of making up his bride in the end of this world. And the bride will rule and reign with Jesus Christ for a thousand years. I mentioned before that only in a thousand years, God's going to clean up the entire world. I'm talking about all these nations of the world that worship false gods. Many of them don't know anything about Jesus, the son of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, so uh, God in 1,000 years, that sounds like a long, long time, but when you consider it took 6,000 years to make up his bride that will rule and reign, it'll be a part of his government. But then the whole world is going to be saved and inherit eternal life in a thousand year period of time. Isaiah said that if you die at a hundred years old, it'll be because you're cursed in that world. Because if, if you live a righteous life, you'll just keep living and God will keep blessing you. You can inherit eternal life during that thousand years. And then after the thousand years, a resurrection is going to take place and no doubt there'll be millions that will resurrect and that resurrection may be more like billions. It's going to be a large number that 
those people. God will resurrect them, his children, even the, even the, un, the unjust, because God is gonna give them an opportunity to hear the truth and see his full manifestation before he eternally judges them. So there's a lot that has to transpire yet. And you and I are called of God and have an opportunity to be a part of it. See, he has an eternal purpose and you and I are blessed and called and given the opportunity to be a, a very intimate part of God's eternal purpose. Latch on to that. Uh, get a hold of it. Don't let it go. Trust the Lord. Uh, God will. If you'll ask God, God, let me know the truth. Help me to understand you. And you pray that prayer earnestly, he will not fail you. And God will touch you and bless you and open your heart and your mind and let you receive truths into your life to know where we're at in God's timetable. Such a blessing today to know the Lord and, and to have uh, an insight on where we're at in God's plan, what's, what's ahead of us, what's gonna transpire, how it's gonna work out. Uh, I'm not in some hope so mystical, ideological, ideological frame of mind, but Thank God, men of God have planted truths in my heart and in my mind that's helped me to understand and we're still working on it. Not, I'm not claiming that we've got all the answers yet, but I am claiming that we have many answers that many do not have. And I, I count ourselves blessed of that. It's not because we're greater, it's because God is going to choose someone to be in his first fruits. And if you're blessed enough, for God uh, is calling beyond you, you can be a part of that. And I believe that the church today and the body of Christ is very much a part of God's eternal purpose. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, you everlasting doors, be ye lifted up, and the Lord of glory will come in. He'll come in and keep blessing and keep blessing and help us um, let's see, what was it? Uh, I wanted, I just wanted to mention, I wanted to, uh, thank all of you. Uh, I, I still want you to know I miss you. I miss being a part of our, having us together in our services. I'm praying with you that this, this ends soon, that God will make a way for his people to get back together in services and that this, this plague will, uh, subside. Uh, I, I know that uh, there's much transpiring right now. The world is, is uh, I think God's preparing this world for something that we, uh, we've said a long time, there has to be a change. We're gonna have, God's going to have to change some things. Wow. What a change that came that was unforeseen by most of all of us. That's the way God works. Sometimes uh, the Lord the Lord works and then he begins to reveal what he's doing. So God bless you all. Uh, I'll see you Sunday. I'll be back on here Sunday morning at 1130. Uh, pray for uh, the people in the body, especially First Gospel Church people that we're praying for. Remember Brother Chuck Millsap in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, he certainly still needs a touch from God. He is better, but he still is in great need of God's help. Uh, Brother Shelby Weaver, Brother Ray and Susan Weaver, Brother Daniels, Bill Daniels in our church. Sister Abraham's asking, continuing to ask for prayer. Sister Alexander, Sister Wilson, Sister uh, uh, Julie Crafton, Brother Crafton. There's so many that has needs today. I wanna thank you for praying for me. I'm doing better. Um, I'm not over everything just yet as far as this vertigo that I've had in uh, uh, happen, but I am better and I'm thankful to God for that and I'm believing that I'm gonna get over this completely. Um, so 
It's yeah, good to sure. have all of you, brother and brother Greg Green. That's good to hear you. Good to see you on on here tonight. Oh, here's what I was going to mention. I, I I posted down there our website FGCLR. It just stands for Full Gospel Church Little Rock dot com. FGCLR dot com. Brother Painter will post this message. Uh, uh, on our website. It will also be on YouTube. It, it, I will post it on my Facebook page also, and I'm sure others will probably repost it. So you can listen to it. If you didn't get in on all of it today, you can listen to it. And uh, I'm believing God that uh, I'm missing, I'm missing the ministry or meetings. Um, uh, you know, I'm missing my brother. Oh, I also wanted to mention Brother Gary Wright. Everyone, uh, you know, in Houston, Texas, Humble Gospel Assembly to keep praying for Brother Wright. He certainly needs a great touch of God in his life. Again, in the Dominican Republic, in Haiti, Mexico, uh, Honduras, uh, Philippines, Africa, India, uh, these nations, many of them are hard hit with this virus. In the Dominican Republic, I've had calls from our churches over there. Some of them been without food for days, out work. Uh, I've, I've sent them money for, for rice and beans, but, uh, you know, uh, they're in dire need, many of our missionary works. And so I want to thank all of you that has sent missionary offerings to us. I want you to know how grateful we are and we're putting your money to work to help those precious people of God. And um, we're, we're, uh, we're doing all we can do to help them. Keep praying for those works. Uh, pray for the ministry of God and pray for our leaders in, in uh, government. Pray for our president and our, our governors and our senators. Uh, God knows they need our prayers. And uh, I appreciate those that are faith, you know, that have faith and live in, in according to faith as much as they have in the Lord. And so let's keep our prayers towards them also. The scripture tells us to do that. Until Sunday morning, my prayers go with you. I love you all. God bless your hearts. Keep your faith and keep looking up. And the Lord of glory will come in to your life and he'll bless you and help you and you'll have assurance that his, his hands on your life. God bless you and good night.